Aliens are real? Meh. I don't know. Should I care? Are they aggressive? Are they nice? Somebody tweet me. Everybody's talking about this. I haven't heard one thing. And I've never seen a picture. You're telling me it's 2023 and nobody can just snap a quick pic of that and upload it onto their Insta or TikTok? Give me a break. All right. We'll see what Gronk has to say about that. He is on the show today. And uh, Aaron Rodgers, St. Aaron Rodgers, can I have $35 million? It makes me laugh. St. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> has such a nice ring to it. I mean, the ups and the downs. Like, they should have a Six Flags ride for Aaron Rodgers or Disneyland or whatever's cool. Like, in Credit Coaster, get out of here. The Aaron Rodgers uh, plus fans plus the public career arc. And then there has to be, like, uh, just the Packers part of that roller coaster is hilarious. Like, what are Packers fans feeling about this? There was no discount. There was no giving back. There was no, there was a, you know, Devontae Adams is like, what's happening to me here because of the money? And now it's a different time. And it's a different day. And it's a different page being turned. And it's another day of training camps. There's 32 teams. But you think there was just one. Because that's what everybody's always talking about. Is what's swirling and whirling with this Jet squad over here. Here it is, guys. Oh, that smiley St. Aaron Rodgers signing a two-year deal at a baby with the Jets and he therefore ergo what so have you punts on his ability to earn an extra 35 million dollars it is the biggest pay cut in NFL history which you already know as you already know that there's aliens uh in the world on the world in the on the earth who knows and look at this okay a couple of these guys are aliens Patrick Mahomes certainly is he's not on this list though take a look this is Aaron going from the highest, fourth highest paid quarterback, making over 50 a year, down to the 13th. This means, guys, that he's no longer even the highest paid quarterback in New York, okay? And coincidentally, he'll be making the same money the Saints gave Derek Carr to outbid the Jets. Which was the win? Yeah, outbid the Jets earlier in the offseason. And the Jets and the Giants, I was just saying, go Shane, shine, go Shane, go, go Dable, everything going out, say, Jets win. The Jets just win. They're winning. They're winning. Now they got Dalvin Cook coming into town. This frees up so much cap space for the Jets, not just this year, not this like, let's have this baby window and we have to win now, but over the next two years. And obviously this Dalvin Cook, Cook rumor mill has been surrounding a bit, but it's a real thing. He's flying to New York. It's got booked this morning. Uh, so Rogers made it clear during his press conference, guys, yesterday before the pay cut was announced that he is going to do everything, including bringing guys like Dalvin Cook potentially into the mix with the Halls and the Garretts and the handshake Michael Carters. That's everything going on. He's doing his part to make the most of his time as a New York Jet. The team gave up uh, significant uh, pieces for it just to be a one-year deal. Um, I'm aware of that. I think there was uh, you know, an awareness of that. Uh, now, again, anything can happen with my body or with the success we have this year. But I'm having a blast, so I don't really see this as a one-year and done thing. Aaron has been seen as so many different things. He has taken and played the bad guy hat, the um, pariah, the greatest ever, the media loves him, media hates him, he's a great team player, he's not a good this, he's a great that. It's so much, it's so, I'm mostly fascinated with how will this man in 20 years be remembered for his chapter in the NFL? You know, what What will that look like? Will different fan bases look at him differently? Will it be polarizing? Or will this sort of a move, and if it all works out and he wins the Super Bowl, will that define his legacy most of all, taking less? Because people love to point to Brady on that, and then people love to point to his ex Giselle. We can get to that with Gronk. Uh, but... There's this whole narrative of Rodgers, take less than Brady. Take look, Brady helped his team. He took a team-friendly deal. Should we be telling players to do that? I don't know. Should we be charging quarterbacks with doing that? 
I don't know. He could. He certainly could have done that a few years ago with the Packers and and sort of bringing and keeping that team together in that group with Devontae. But whatever the case, it's done there now. He's here and he's setting up the Jets incredibly well for a two-year stretch. And if this ends up resulting in an elusive uh, second ring that puts him in an entirely different conversation among quarterbacks 20 years from now as we're looking back... Um, even kill with, with Patrick Mahomes, who might have a few more when he's all said and done. It will be the most interesting character arc that I think we've ever seen in this league. And if it doesn't work out, just the pressure, just the pressure. on like, If you're showing up to practice and you know and you're Dalvin Cook and you're signing, you're like, he took, he's basically paying what my salary, he's, he, he's eating my salary, what it is for me to eat these yards up on the field for these games. Are you giving so much more if it's off the rails? Does money make things sticky, the idea of it, the pressure? Or does it get everybody on the same page and show, I am this dude, I am this leader, I know what I want. Don't tell me I want MVP trophies. Don't tell, I want championships and I want that and I think think I can do that here. It's all going swimmingly. And I really want to go there. And I think we might be going there next week. So I'm going to ask Aaron Rodgers for 35 million because he seems to be just handing them out these days. It's great. Uh, Okay. So as if helping the Jets front office wasn't enough. Okay. Let's take a listen to this. He's also apparently, and this is all that legacy conversation. We have a new producer on our show. Her name's Tierra. I said, why is he doing this? Why is he taking the, putting this money back? And she said, I think he's considering his legacy. And I think she's right. And what he's doing is, uh, you know, he's obviously changed and evolved and his humanity is very important. He's, he's very human. He's very transparent. Um, and he's got things to say, but he's got things to say to Jordan Love, who's taking this job. And everyone wants to say, you know, how far it was to Aaron and what does that look like? Is he going to be like that with love and people somehow for whatever reason don't expect him to be that? It's always been a great relationship. I don't believe that it wasn't. I, that's my opinion. But he gave him a call. Jordan Love talked about it. Um, and they sort of spoke about a phone call that Love got from Rogers leading into the first training camp where he's at the helm. Aaron reached out to me last night and that's exactly what he said. Yeah, he said, just be yourself, have fun, enjoy it. Um, you know, it's obviously my time now, and he just said, you know, be yourself. And, I mean, that's all you can do, you know. That's kind of been the message from everybody is, you know, be yourself. Don't try and be anybody else. Don't try to be Aaron, things like that. Just be yourself, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. How can you not love Aaron Rodgers? I mean, are you, if you're Packers fans, you got to love that. You might not love the other things that you're seeing, but you got to love that. The mentorship is genuine. It's real. And Love went on to talk about how much having the support of a legend like him and helping him build his own confidence, you love to see it. And as for the practice itself, Green Bay fans, reports out of GB were not as uh, not as cute. Nope, not as piggly wiggly, people. M- maybe... I don't know, first day jitters. All right, Dobbs, what are you, okay, all right, all right. Word on the uh, street, on the Twitter street, X street, what are we calling it now? The offense had a little bit rough of a go here, so much so that our friend Matt Schneidman, a uh, friend of the show, tweeted that the entire offense was doing push-ups and post-practice um, from as a gift from LaFleur as a punishment. So hopefully it's just a blip and they settle in today. Let's not make training camp and winning, you know, winning training camp and winning the offseason doesn't mean anything. Finally... Let's check in on what might what might be <laughs> the most intriguing camp to watch this summer. If you think I'm not trying to find a way up to Niners and check out what they're doing, you've got to be crazy because I, what's going on with these quarterbacks? It sounds like Brock Purdy is ahead of schedule, which is great news. But let's take a listen to John Lynch. Brock's cleared and, and ready to go. Um... Uh, he's, he's, he's been cleared. He's uh, going to be without restrictions. Now, having said that, um, we're sticking and we're adhering to a, a plan that's been put in place for, for some time. And um, he got after it the last couple of days. We upped his pitch count, so it was kind of the peak of the buildup. And so he'll, he'll take off uh, day one. And, uh, but, you know, we believe in that plan. So he's cleared without restriction. There will be some time off, you know, due to, due to pitch count and all that, sticking to the plan. But the great news is Brock has worked his tail off and, and he's ready to go. Okay, so Kyle Shanahan also made it clear that Brock will be taking all the reps with the starting offense during training camp when he's out there, while Trey Lance and Sam Darnold will split reps with the ones on Purdy's off days. And even though that pecking order seems to be straightforward, fans 
San Francisco media all afternoon were ooing and eyeing over Trey Lance's new quicker release. Okay, this was the hot topic yesterday. I don't, this, is, this drama is not over. I don't think it's over anytime soon. I think it's gonna happen all of camp. And speaking of drama, the Niners put Nick Bosa on the reserve did not report list and they're not expecting him to show without a deal, okay? Well, of course the Niners have to get it done. They are up against it. It's worth noting because this is a team that you sort of expect to cakewalk through the entire NFC. They're projected right now to be 16 million over the cap, the anti-Aaron Rodgers. They need money, he's giving it away and you get a million and you get 35 million. Uh, and by the way, at 16 million without Bosa on the books, people, I've tried to tell this to Niners fans. This is why having a quarterback who's only taking up 0.4% of your cap space over the next three seasons and Brock Purdy, getting him to seize the job is the best scenario. Why are we trying to fight it? You're not paying Brock anything. You don't have the cash. Let's go. And I got Bosa saying, nope. So we have to see how this all plays out. But does that make sense? 0.4, the 0.4 is pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. Um, Gronk's on the show, guys. I don't know if he's seen this thing about aliens. Gronk, you got Gronk. They're saying aliens are here. They're real. I don't know if it's if it's Tom Brady an alien. Patrick Mahomes. We'll talk about it after this. We'll be back uh, on up and the old world tight end, the six foot seven three. You can call me the goat. Rob Gronkowski. Touchdown! Oh my goodness. Go, go, go! Holy Gronk, I'm holy. You never know where these interviews are going to go. <laughs> With Rob Gronkowski on the show, four-time Super Bowl champ, FanDuel family member, you are here. It is training camp, and I am excited to talk to you. It's been a long time. Yes, it's been a while, Kay. We're back, and today I'm going to be earning it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got this. It was the um, uh, uh, Jane Skinner Goodell, Commissioner Roger Goodell's wife, made a beautiful documentary series about all of the amazing women that run the NFL, Norma Hunt, the late Norma Hunt, who passed away this past year included. And I saw it in my closet this morning, and I've never worn it. And I said, I'm going to put this on today. So, yeah, we're wow. earning it today, Rob Gronkowski. I, I got a and question. And you got a really fun think, thing. Yeah. Do you think Roger Goodell is earning his $62 million per year? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think if you see what the what the NFL is making every year, I would say probably it's the, the right. decimals and the commas check out. Uh, okay, let's talk about. We've got a lot. To, God, we have a lot to get to, and you have a fun fanboyy thing that we have to talk about as well. But first, it is training camp. You know, I used to cover the Patriots. I was there that first day when they'd swing the gates open. You were there year in year out in the hot sun with Bill Belichick, with the clipboards, with the Matt Patricias. When you see footage like this. Where does it take your mind, like, the first day of school? Uh, it it kind of, like, gives me some joy just seeing all the fans go in. It gives you, like, the goosebumps because that's what gets you through training camp is all the fans, actually. I mean, those grueling days when it's 100 degrees, the humidity is 90, uh, 90% out there, and you're just pouring sweat. You're just pounding each other out on the field, hitting DNs every second, trying to get open and you're kind of dragging a little bit, and then you look over and there's a couple fans, I mean, just a couple fans throwing comments out, making you laugh. They're the ones who push you through <laughs> training camp. So it's great to see how excited they are to come out there and watch you play the game of football and just go out there and practice. So they get you through. You gotta love the fans. You gotta love their excitement when running through the gates when they open. Rob, is training camp the worst? Training camp's kind of like the worst, but it's also really good for you as well. You know, it gives you that discipline. And I'm so glad I had all those training camps throughout my life. I mean, I've been playing football since I was in high school. So probably about 17 uh, months of training camp in my life. So I've been in training camp for over a year and a half in my life. And I, I think it teaches wow. you discipline. Uh, it teaches you, you know, how to come together as a team uh, and all that good stuff uh, that you can use in your life. But uh, eventually, when you be start becoming a veteran and you're still just pounding your body, going every single day, training camp can get a little, um, little, you know, rough on yourself. You know, it can it can be a little dreadful, and uh, you know, it, it can be a little long as well. But uh, overall, it's great for uh, a lot of things in life. But when you're a little bit older, it's not as fun. 
Yeah, and then there's that hill back there you had to run in New England. I don't know how it was down in Tampa. But, I mean, it, some of it was good. You famously won a three-point competition, right? Yeah, so we do team bonding. Uh, when I was with the Patriots, we had a couple team bonding exercises where it would be outside of the football. I mean, you go to the movies, you you team bond at the movies, you see a movie where it kind of was like an inspiration that gives you motivation for the mm. next day to go out to practice. But then we had a team bonding moment where uh, we went and had a three-point contest because all the skill guys in the locker room, all they do is talk garbage 24-7. Oh, I'm the best <laughs> uh, basketball player in the locker room. Oh, I'm the best uh, shooter in the locker room. So finally, we put it to the test. Uh, everyone got together. Uh, we had a we had a three point contest in the middle of training camp, and guess who won the three point contest? Yes, you're talking to him right now. Okay, I won the three point contest. I can tell you this: all the skill players were mad. No one congratulated me. <laughs> Everyone was shocked. And every day I was just sitting there, and they were all talking about how good they are at shooting. I am a secret lethal shooter from the three point line, and I was on fire. I beat everyone, and uh, it, it just the day didn't go as planned for them. Like Who always. Who thought they were the best? Uh, Devin McCourty, Patrick Chung, mm. um, mm. um, Harmon, uh, who else? Uh, just all of them, all those skill guys. Yeah. They just, all the Nothing DBs, like, they just think they're the best. Yeah. Nothing like, uh, Nothing like nobody congratulating you and everybody being mad about it that to make team building happen up there in New England. But hey, you guys won a bunch of championships, so it all worked. Talk to me about <laughs> aliens. Are you in on aliens? Are you interested? Do you care? Are they good? Are they bad? No, I love aliens. I'm definitely pro alien. I think they're great. You know, I actually want to meet an alien one day. It would be really cool. I think of guys like Elon Musk. I possibly, I always say sometimes I'm like, he might possibly be an alien. Okay. Uh, like. The way he can calculate numbers, come up with those businesses, then have another billion dollar business on the side. Like you got to be an alien in a way in order to be running all those. So I think there may be some humans that are aliens out there, but I want to really meet an alien coming from a different planet. That would be really cool. I'm for the aliens. I'm pro alien. I think we should do more research about aliens. And I think humans should meet aliens. If, if there was an NFL player, who would you be least surprised as an alien? Like, oh, that checks out. That makes sense. Like, who in the NFL is suspect number one? Like, someone that's, like, an absolute freak, like uh, DK Metcalf. Like, that guy is an absolute freak. Yes. And uh, he just has muscles everywhere. He runs, like, a 4 240. I mean, he can run track as well. He's faster <laughs> than all the track athletes out there. It just doesn't make sense. He may be part alien as well. See, you picture, like, big, strong feats of strength. I'm picturing, like, Mike McDaniel is an alien. Like, that's my alien. Like, the, like he's, you know, the crafty, like, that, that. I think he's an alien. Yes, yes, you hit that on. That does make a lot of sense. He may be an alien as well. <laughs> he's kind of like, he's just got the secret sauce just rolling all, at all times, and uh, he, may, he may be an alien. He's the coach of the aliens. <laughs> We're going to dig into some more NFL storylines here. Um, let's talk about this Barbie premiere, though, because it's very fun. And I just like the footage. I like the pink, all of that. I'm in L.A. It's Barbie mania. And you and your girlfriend went to the premiere and you looked incredible. I need your film review. I have not seen it yet. Yes, uh, I enjoyed the movie. You know, I didn't really know what to expect. I'm um, going into it. There's definitely some action, you know, it keeps you interested the whole entire movie. It keeps you engaged. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, if you're definitely a female, you're definitely going to love the movie. One thousand uh, percent. There's, there's no doubt about that. I would say uh, I love the ro role that Ken had, you know, Ken was getting bullied around a little bit and then he came through. Uh, when he went to the real world in the movie. So just overall, it was a good movie. Um, I think it would be great even for uh, men, uh, you know, to go to, especially if, uh, to go to with your girlfriend. I think it would be great for couples to go to. I don't see a group of guys, a single guy is going to the movie, but I think it's great for uh, um, a couple to go to or a husband and wife, a wife to go to. But uh, overall, they did a good job. The actors and actresses, they were all spot on. That's for sure. They all did an okay. un unbelievable job. And uh, just overall, yeah, I would definitely go and see it. Can you imagine if Bill Belichick took all the boys, Mac Jones, all those guys over to 
the Patriots play cinema to see Barbie. <laughs> see, I think that's the the last movie that they're going to go see uh, as a team building exercise. <laughs> I would say uh, one of the other movies like Mission Impossible or uh, Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah, one of those movies that that are out right now. Yeah. He would go see, that that would be more of a team building exercise for a football team, especially for the New England Patriots. But uh, Barbie would be pretty funny though if he did it as a prank. I mean, I could see him doing it to maybe maybe to loosen up the guys. You know, hey guys, we're going to a movie, and then everyone walks in. And it's Barbie. You know, yeah. just to give everyone a good laugh. I mean, I would go see it again. <laughs> Two thumbs up. We love it. And Jane Fonda is not even in it. So that means, you know, we really love it. Okay. So here's what, here's the thing. Ken had his Barbie. Gosling had his Margot Robbie. You have your Camille. Our, our baby, our Travis Kelsey is still looking for his Barbie. Okay. He's still trying to make it happen. And I don't know if you saw this, but Travis Kelsey said that he tried to give a Taylor Swift friendship bracelet to her at her own show when she was in Kansas City. And how cute is this? It had his phone number on it, which is amazing, amazing. Um, and she literally said no, didn't want anything to do with him. What do you think? Good couple. I think Travis is a, he's a very thoughtful guy. And if they started dating, that would be hands down the number one Ken and Barbie in the NFL, no doubt about that. So let's hope it happens. Mm. That would be really cool. If Travis and uh, Taylor <laughs> Swift are dating, come on, Taylor, let's make it happen. Let's go. <laughs> I know. I, was, I felt so bad for him, but I love that he admitted that that happened. That's amazing. Okay, so we haven't hung out in a bit. I, I'm going to fill you in on a little bit of what's been going on around the NFL. I know you, you're doing your thing. You got games on Fox this year. You've got all your NFL stuff. But we got paid quarterbacks. Justin Herbert got a big bag yesterday, and Joe Burrow will be the next one paid. He sort of played the game of chicken to be the last guy that gets paid the most. So Chris Collinsworth was here with me on Monday, and he told me what he thought about Burrow and his chances this year. Look at this. Joe Burrow is is has a chance to do it all this year and I, and and let me just tell you why Joe Burrow walks into this season healthy for the first time. full practice full ability to get this thing going right off the bat if you've got to pick out one my pick to win the Super Bowl even though it's it's stupid to say it is the Bengals what do you think? I think the Bengals will be in the playoffs again. They definitely have a shot at at the Super Bowl. I mean, they've been in it the last two years. They went to the Super Bowl two years ago. I mean, they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs this year. No, who who was it to? Who do they lose to? The Chiefs, right? This mm -hmm. year in the playoffs. They beat so the Bills be and it. lost to the Chiefs, yeah. Yep, they'll be in it once again. Uh, they have a great team. And uh, I feel like they're a team that they put it together you know, when it really counts. At the beginning of the season, they're iffy, you know, and then all of a sudden they just, you know, put it in the fifth gear and they and they turn it on and uh, they start smoking all the teams when they really need to. But um, Joe Burrow, he's definitely next in line. He's, go he's going to get paid. If he's not paid this year, he's going to get paid after this season, no matter what. And uh, he'll be making, I don't know, $54 million a year with his contract. So everyone has to one-up each other and he's going to one-up uh, Justin Herbert, that's for sure. We had Malik Jackson, Super Bowl champion. You faced him a bunch in your career. He was on the show on Tuesday, and he had this take about a certain fan base. Take a listen to this. And really quickly, who is the nightmare fan base you had to play in front of? The nightmare fan base. Um, I guess I have to say the Patriots. They have that false uh, sense of uh, greatness. You know, they think they're out there putting things on, <laughs> and the way they talk to you in the stands is uh, quite interesting. So I'd have to say them. Wow. 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 That, that was very interesting. I never heard a, a player say that before, because if you come to our stadium, it's a stadium where all our fans are nice to the opposing uh, team. That's for sure. I mean, I was thinking he was going to say maybe Philly or the Bills or something. It's a total different atmosphere than those two. Those are some grueling atmospheres if you go to as an away team. If you have an away jersey, my mom won't wear my jersey when she goes to a Buffalo Bills game or, say, to a Philadelphia yeah. Eagles game because they just harass the opposing team the whole time. Here in New England, we're nice to everyone I hear. I hear when my friends wear their team jersey because they're not Patriot fans, they say that New England Patriot fans are super nice to them because we don't have anything to hate on. We're always beating that team. So 
I never heard that before. That was a very interesting take. He must have had, he must have ran into just a couple of the fans that were, you know, giving him some, some garbage. Gronk, if you think that these New England fans are telling the Jets fans to come eat lobster rolls and lobster bisque before you go, you're out of your mind. There's no, no way. No, I'm not lying. I mean, the Jets haven't beat the Patriots in 10 years. I mean, they don't have any hate against them. You know, they feel bad for the Jets fans. That's the thing. Let's. <laughs> okay, let's get into this Jets thing. Aaron Rodgers. This big news, 35 million. He pulled a Brady team-friendly situation, wants to load up the team even more. Dalvin Cook is on his way to New York. When you heard that he pulled what people are calling a Brady, though it's different, I think, a little bit, what were your thoughts, truly? You know, I got to, you know, give him respect, man, for doing that. I mean, he's got money. He's been playing for how many years now, getting paid 40 plus million dollars every year. I mean, what's the difference between 50 million and then 40, 40 million now, especially at, at this point in your career? All you want to do is cement your legacy and win some games. And obviously that must mean he's enjoying his time in New York. He needed a culture change and now he got the culture change and he's in New York. He's loving it. And now he took a team friendly deal which is which is great to see, man. Um, I'm just I'm happy for him, and I'm, I'm happy he's loving it there. And I, I'm excited to watch the Jets play with him at quarterback this year. With some of those years that you played with Tom, and there were things that happened that made it more possible with the cap to bring in different players, and it was known that Tom Brady could have had more money and took that. Did it add more pressure, and was it ever talked about in the locker room, or how did that go? I mean, it was never talked about in the locker room, but you kind of just felt it, you know. Uh, you felt the presence of everyone's deals and all that. You do, but you really don't talk about it. And if you do, it's kind of like low-key on the side or something. But um, I think it's going to help out the team. It's You know, it's great to see. I mean, it's going to raise awareness to other players that, oh, if my quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and the best quarterback in the NFL – currently right now if he's taking that pay cut and he's out there practicing his butt off every single day well guess what i'm going to be doing the same thing i'm going to practice my butt off every day no matter what my pay is if even if i'm not satisfied with my contract look what aaron Rodgers just did so he's leading the team by example and uh, so far so good uh he's doing a great job in new york and uh, i think the jets are going to have a solid year this year Define solid. You played them two, twice a year for so many years. You know that there's a lot of stuff they have to get through. They, of course, change the entire teams and who's running them and all of that, the infrastructure. What's it going to take for them? Well, the, the last 10 years, yes, they've been absolute garbage. That's for sure. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I'm not for the Jets still. I'm not. I'm against the Jets. I mean, I'm a Patriot <laughs> now, so the Jets, they're just not cool to us. But uh, I'm going to be realistic with how they're going to be this year. And uh, last year, I thought they had an excellent team. It was just the quarterback play was just kind of horrendous at some points. Just balls getting launched up in the air, and there wasn't even a receiver around within 15 yards. And Aaron Rodgers is going to change that. And uh, he doesn't do silly plays like that. He doesn't make silly mistakes like that. Uh, he keeps everyone accountable. And uh, this year, I think they're 100% going to make the playoffs. Um, they're going to change it around. They got a lot of offensive weapons. He's going to know how to get the ball to the offensive weapons. That's for sure. And on top of it, they're going to go to the playoffs, but they're going to be Super Bowl contenders, meaning they will definitely have a chance. I don't think they'll win the Super Bowl, but I think they'll definitely be in contention to, to make a run. I keep saying this because I want it to happen because it's, it's like such a fun story, right? He's there. It doesn't work out with the Packers. He's there. He wins one championship in 18 seasons. He comes here and does and is trying to do this, and he's doing all of the right things. I want to see it happen, but I can't. It's, it's hard to not compare it to what Tom did, right? But it's different because Tom went to the NFC. The AFC and the NFC could not be more different as far as toughness. But also, like, Tom didn't come out firing, right? You were part of that team. Like, y'all had struggles. There was chemistry. Like, you know, and he had great receivers, incredible receivers. He had you. He had a great defense. But it takes a little to get going. And then something clicked for you guys. And you went on this seven or eight game win streak. I can't remember. And then won the Super Bowl. Like, I'm scared that in the AFC East, the margin of, 
uh, the margin of error is really – you can't lose your first seven, eight games and then try to squeak away into the playoffs to win it. It's just too hard. So, you know, are, are, we, are you worried at all just as, you know, a four-time Super Bowl champion? Like, what's – out the gate, they have to be hot, but out the gate, their, their schedule sucks. Yes, they definitely do have a tough schedule. I think they're in the hardest uh, division in football this year. Uh, you got the Patriots who are up and coming, um, especially with the hire of Bill O'Brien. You got the Dolphins who made the playoffs last year, and then you got the reigning champs with the Buffalo Bills, who they're going to be on fire this year as well. It's going to be a very, very tough division. I think it's one of the most uh, toughest divisions in all of football over like the last, I would say, decade. There's no doubt about that. And they do have a tough schedule. But one advantage is it's a very similar situation with when Tom went down to Tampa. I mean, the Jets haven't made the playoffs in, in like a decade. Tampa didn't mm -hmm. haven't made the playoffs in like a decade as well. I mean, when was the last time the Jets won a playoff game? Actually, I think it was versus us in 2010. So it's a very similar situation. Both have good defenses. The offense was not that well. And now they're improving just like that to have uh, to have Tom when he went to Tampa and now to have Aaron Rodgers when uh, how he went to the Jets. But um, yeah, it's very, very, very similar. And the thing is the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, it's not the COVID situation. Tom went to Tampa in the COVID situation. Oh, He's been call. with the Jets True. now since the summertime. So they've been They've been, you know, having that bond from the beginning. He understands his wide receivers now. He understands how the program is run. So they have that jump start, and I think that's going to be huge. And that's going to be the one advantage that Aaron Rodgers has over Tom Brady when he went down to the Buccaneers is that he had the offseason to gain that chemistry and the connection with the team and the organization, and they're going to come out firing from the beginning. Damn, Gronk, I forgot. I didn't even think about that. It just puts just another mark in the Tom Brady and, and the greatness column of what he was able to accomplish in the midst of all of that. They're like Thank putting you. the fans in the it. stadium. What? Thank you. I was, a, I was a part of it. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. You were a big part of it. So because you were a big part of it, I'm going to ask you this last question before we get to the, the fun fan duel stuff. What would you say to um, Corey Davis? Now, obviously, he's got Randall Cobb, who he knows, and Lazard. Garrett Wilson, guys who are making some nice catches, but these, these, these receivers that are tasked with out the gates having chemistry, what would you, what's the best advice to get on the same page as quickly as possible? Yes, work your butt off. Don't make any excuses. Uh, show up every single day. Be accountable every single day. Be consistent. And to gain that chemistry with your quarterback, no matter what, what do whatever it takes, no matter what it takes. If, it needs, if you need to stay after practice for 10 minutes uh, with Aaron Rodgers and work on one route for the whole 10 minutes to be on the same page, you got to do that. You got to do whatever it takes. If you got to go in the film room and uh, and understand what's going on with the defense, where Aaron Rodgers is going to throw the ball and where it's going to be placed, then you got to do that. You got to take that extra step. And uh, this is the year for them to do it. This is the year that they can all show up and be great. So take that extra step and uh, to greatness. Amazing. Great advice for those young receivers. Now, I hear that you have a big announcement with FanDuel next week. What can fans expect? Yes, yes. I have an exciting announcement and I have a brand new game I'm launching on FanDuel's gaming app, the FanDuel Face-Off, baby. That's what's up. And I can't share too much now. All right. All right. Okay. I know you're giddy. I know you're giddy. I know you want me to share all the goods, but I just can't yet. <laughs> but um, I've worked hard with the FanDuel Face-Off team to create an amazing game that I love. And both Ralphie and I are featured in the game. And Ralphie, if you didn't know, which <laughs> to the fans out there, Ralphie is my son. Uh, he, AKA he's my dog, but I consider him my son, but, um, the team is giving away a bunch of fr prizes all month long. So download FanDuel face off and follow the at FanDuel accounts on social media ahead of time to get ready for the action and users can win sign memorabilia and rewards for playing the game. And also my favorite part of it, you can play for cash. So you can pay your bills once you win in this game as well. So let's go get, get ready. Big announcement, big drop coming soon. This is a, it's very mysterious. I got to tell you, they're not giving me many details on what this could be. I don't know if it's like a made up game that you came up with or if it's like an old school game you're bringing back. But the gaming app has so much fun stuff on it. And yes, you can win cash. So get on over there. And the release date for the Rob Gronkowski FanDuel face-off game is August 1st.
Yes, it is. And that's what I love about it. You can play for cash against people as well on it. Win some all right, money. You're the best. Some money. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thank you for all. I mean, and Travis Kelsey, good luck. Good luck with Taylor. Yeah, good luck, Travis. Drunk. I wish you the best, baby. Make it happen. <laughs> all right. We'll be back. We got back to back tight ends. We have Jody Fortson on the show. Are the Chiefs repeating this year? What does he make of Riz God, Travis Kelsey? We'll be back. Jody Fortson all smiles this week at Chiefs training camp entering. Oh my gosh, is this year number four? Smile if it's year number four. It certainly is. Fourth training camp here. Uh, and, and another tight end joining us right now. Um, like Gronk, he's a Super Bowl champion and from Buffalo, New York. Put those two together. The pride of South Park High School from the reigning champion, Kansas City Chiefs. Jody Fortson, I, I feel like I don't even remember that you guys won the Super Bowl. It was so long ago. <laughs> Uh, the offseason definitely was short. <laughs> yeah, was it? So how does it feel? Does, does Andy let you guys talk about it at all, or is it like no mention of the wins at all? Oh, no, we definitely allow to show our personalities. You know, Coach Reed does a great job of just letting us be who we are. But we're definitely on to next year, you know. We already did last year, so it's time to go back to back. Uh, Coach lets you be you, but he also makes you guys do stuff that I can't imagine must be that fun because you are one of seven teams in the NFL that spend camp away from the facility. So are you a fan of going away camp? No, nah, I'd rather much. I would much <laughs> rather. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Jody, what is the benefit of being out there? Like, what do y'all do after practice all day? Uh, I guess the, you know... The biggest benefit of it is the camaraderie, you know, the team being uh, with each other nonstop, you know, from going to the cafe, to the dorms, to the practice field, like we're we're around each other nonstop. So there's really not escaping, you, no escaping. You get to learn much about like <laughs> people, with different backgrounds and where they come from and whatnot. So it's, it's pretty sweet, you know, just get to know your team. Sure. So you're in St. Joe, Missouri at Missouri Western State University. Is there at least like a good restaurant? Like where are we, where are we going to? You're saying you can't escape, but you can get away a little bit, right? Uh, kind of. Not really too much escape. Okay. But. I won't get you in trouble. I won't get you in trouble, Jody. You were there to bond with your teammates and to work on getting another Super Bowl <laughs> ring for the Kansas City Chiefs fan base uh, and for yourself. Um, let's see. How different is what's like your mindset, your focus going into your fourth training camp. You were there in 2019. You were an undrafted free agent. I, you know, you've definitely grown and evolved over the years. Um, it's really not much different. You know, I just have the same mentality as going in and doing the best that I can do, you know, being available and just trying to, you know, be available for my team, make the plays when my number gets called. It's not really too much different. I feel like I'm a hard worker. and My team appreciates that from me. Uh, and you all have a really interesting and inspiring path to the NFL and becoming a Super Bowl champion. Of course, you you know went from uh, on a journey from playing at a lot of small colleges to you know making a budding dynasty in the Chiefs. What motivates you in this like next part of your career? Um, I mean, I'm really pretty much self motivated. You know, I love the game of football. You know, it brings a lot of joy, not only to me to those around me that care about me. You know, it brings a lot of people together. But, you know, ultimately, I just like winning. So I like came in, I came into a great organization where we just started winning off the jump. So it's just kind of contagious at that point. And you get Travis Kelsey. You get to hang out with him. He's quite a character. He's had the craziest offseason ever. Did you hear this thing about he, how he got shut down by Taylor Swift? I did hear about that, man. It's all right, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear about that. <laughs> I, uh, it's hard to believe somebody would turn Travis Kelsey down. I've never seen it happen. I was about to say that. I mean, that doesn't, I'm sure that doesn't happen often for him. So it, it definitely was like a culture shock, like what? <laughs> <laughs> but I like, you heard what he did, right? It was a, a friendship bracelet. Cause that's like, they, they give each other these bracelets at her concerts and he had one with his number on it. Oh, that's actually pretty clever. I'm going to have to steal the page out of his book. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Tell me, Jody, what else do you steal out of his book? What has he, what kind of an impact has he made on your game? To be honest with you, I'm trying to steal everything. You know, Kelsey is arguably, arguably like one of the greatest to do this. So 
I I'm working every day crafting it to, you know, be remotely something close to that. You know, from the way he runs his routes to the patience behind it. Most importantly, his professionalism. You know, Kelsey is always smiling. He always walks off the field. He's signing autographs. He's just very personable. Like I think Kelsey's a, a great mentor, not just for me, but for any other tight end in the league that just aspires to be great. I think they should definitely uh, take a page out of his book because I think he does it well. I think the rest of the world agrees as well. I think the smartest thing is trying to take whatever you can uh, away from him. I do think when, when you say he's professional, it's not that people don't think he's professional, but it's the same thing. I just had Rob Gronkowski on. They're so fun. They've got great personalities. They're good leaders, good team guys. But it's almost like they're goofy. But people don't understand what it takes, right? Like, like, tell me more about that side of Travis Kelsey in that tight end room when it comes to playing ball. He's like a coach on the field. I always say that. Like, he knows exactly where – not only where he's supposed to be, but where everybody else is, you know, he kind of deviates from the plans a little bit, but he does it to where it doesn't interrupt anybody else's job. Like Kelsey is like a magician. Like he, he just knows what's going on. He knows the details. He knows what the defense is supposed to be doing, where they're not supposed to be at. Like he just, he just, he, he does a great job of finding space. Kelsey's just a, I can't say it enough, man. He's just, he's a goat for real. I'm so happy to be in a well, room and you're and you're with him there in St. Joe's, and you're also with him on the field when y'all are doing your thing. And we here on my show like to do research. We have an incredible producer who went deep into it, but not really that deep because we see this on the field every every Sunday. But everybody sort of looks at the offense in KC and they say, oh, it's so high flying. It's built on speed. Of course, a little maybe maybe less with Tyreek leaving. But did you know that you ran three tight end sets, the third most in the NFL? No, nah, I was unaware. Third most in the NFL. And you, Jody, you were a huge, crucial part of that personnel, as you can see right here, okay? Why do these three tight end sets give you such an advantage? Well, I like to think it's because, you know, we're just all Mitch Mac nightmares, you know? Um, myself, converting from receiver, you know, defense or defenders, linebackers aren't going to be able to keep up. Corners are usually too small to be around there. And it just, you know, frees everybody else up from the different speed and the different, what I bring to the game as far as speed around the edge, you know. Well, it's third most in the NFL, and I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but a lot of the Chiefs' most iconic plays from this whole past season came out of those 13 personnel sets, including... One of the biggest plays, and you know what I'm talking about, of the past Super Bowl. Walk me through this one from your vantage point out there. I'm going to tell you, off the, off the dribble, I thought I was getting the ball. I was running too fast. And then, <laughs> boy, Pat, you know, opening up the field, he got to running with his tongue out. When you see Pat 1-5 with that tongue out, know something special is about to happen. <laughs> 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 Definitely start taking the ball. Get to it. He start picking his knees up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but Jody, did he steal your Super Bowl moment? I want to say, first of all, I think every moment is one five. She got the ball every play. So we're not going to say he stole my moment. But I mean, I would have liked to have a little piece in there. <laughs> I know. That's what I said. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's so true. I love that. Keep doing what you're doing. Your role in the offense is insane, incredible. And you, I'm just excited to watch what else y'all do this year because, you know, no, the Chiefs, they weren't, and you were a former receiver, they they weren't wanting Odell, they didn't want DeAndre Hopkins, they, like, it's Kadarius, Tony, and this tight end situation, so you, you better be ready to bring it. Oh, we're ready. Okay, enjoy, enjoy, I feel bad for you. Andy, this is a terrible situation having these boys at camp, but I hope you have fun and make the best of it. Fourth training camp, get through it and start kicking ass early this season. Jody, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us. So great to get to know him. I like when his face lights up at that Super Bowl play. And yeah, Patrick, you don't have enough love. Like, you don't have enough highlights. Like you can kind of let Jody Fortson have him. Well, gosh, we'll be back. The WNBA season's heating up, and you can turn crossovers into cash. Where can you do that? Uh, with us at FanDuel, of course. Right now, new customers get $100 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet now is the perfect time to join FanDuel. The app's easy to use, there's always great promotions, and when you win, you get paid 
instantly. <sighs> Gotta love it. All right, let's get to it, guys. We got some fantasy bits. These are just things that I think of on my drive to work. And by drive to work, I mean the walk into my little office here from my bedroom. So yeah, wow. <laughs> We are in full sweatpants mode here, and we will be at training camps all next week, but we are here for some fantasy bits, and today I wanna talk about Commander's receiver Jahan Dotson, okay? It was something of a surprise when Washington grabbed him back in 2022, he was taken 16th overall, but he put on a show as a rookie. He scored seven touchdowns in his first 10 career games, and he had a lot of success, he looked good, he sort of popped off the page, even in this, with his stats, but, I still think he's being slept on, partly because of the question marks that are sort of surrounding Washington with Sam Howell. I don't think anybody in Washington questions it, but people who are drafting definitely do. Not exactly a marquee name, and I think partly because of the five games that Howell missed due to injury last year that knocked him out of the Rookie of the Year race. Um, so I'm not letting any of those questions stop me. Jahan Dotson looks good for this year. Everything should be shaping into form, and right now he's going in the seventh round as a borderline, this is true, a borderline wide receiver four. This is criminal. This is like the most value you could possibly get and love and want. So uh, if you look at the way he ended, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. His last five games, geez Louise. And if you look at the way he ended last season, uh, he was a wide receiver one in this time. So, uh, you know, and that by the way was with Sam Howell out there some of the time. So get Dotson while you can. Enjoy watching him emerge as I believe one of the biggest steals of this draft. There's a lot of talk about McLaurin. I'm, I'm okay with taking him, but if you're talking about value, definitely between the two on that offense, the more valuable grab. Um, okay, let's go camping. We had a beautiful conversation with Rob Gronkowski talking about his times, mostly in New England. I think, what, did training camp not exist? Did he go to training camp in Tampa? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. We gotta, we gotta go look at that. I don't think uh, he I'm did. Sure he yeah, I'm sure he tried to miss as much of it as he could. As you know, we've seen a lot of veterans do over the years. I don't think he did. Was, you know, he thinks training camp. He thinks Bill Belichick that hill that they have to run up of <laughs> to do laps and all of the trauma that leads to a Super Bowl ring and a ring ceremony after. So, okay, let's go camping and see what is going on. What is our first one? Let's do it. Let's take a look at what the Lions are doing. We have Dan Campbell doing things. <laughs> Eh, doing I'm meltdowns. Over I'm yeah. over this. <laughs> I, I, I knew that was going to be your reaction. Uh, we know, you know, things get old for you very quickly. <laughs> like, is is Mike Rabel out there doing push-ups too? It's just, let's move on. Well, can we get Mike McDaniel doing up and downs? Let's do that. Like, Mike Mike McDaniel walks around and like has fun and chums up to his to his athletes out there. Cool. Oh, training camp. Okay. Uh, Josh Allen apparently met his number one fan yesterday. Oh, and there's okay. tears. There's tears flowing. Where? Where? I don't. I'm seeing the tears. I'm. I don't understand what's happening. All right, <laughs> Hamilton. What did you? What do you think about aliens? Uh, what do I think about it? I, I think what we heard yesterday was was pretty alarming. Um, you know, everybody's having yeah. fun with it, but th this guy made it sound like a pretty scary situation. Yeah, that girl's saying, oh my God, I just touched Haley Steinfeld. That's why she's crying. She's not crying because of Josh Allen. Read, read the room, you idiots. Goodbye.